Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, or possibly good evening, boys and girls, as this is a children's story reading. So, um, without further ado, we'll go to the next thrilling installment of Jimmy and the Pink Diamond. What's the matter with you? Bob scowled back at Boris and said, What's the matter with you? Why didn't you say anything to my boss? You made me feel a right fool, you horrible old bird. Why didn't you talk? Was it too much to ask? Boris flew up to the top of the refrigerator and replied politely, We don't have too much time left, my friend. He then called out to Buck Buck. Now, he said in animish, Go now, my dear comrade, wait for me outside. Buck Buck dashed out from under the table and ran down the front steps. Boris followed him, flying low across the living room and through the front door. His old heart was pounding with excitement. Buck Buck was already waiting for him on the sidewalk. Didn't we all do well, Bucky? Boris chuckled. They had taken back what was rightfully theirs. They had done it all together. Boris put his wings around Buck Buck and gave the huge ginger tomcat a thankful hug. Thank you for everything, Buck Buck. We could not have managed any of this without you, my friend. Oh, that was nothing, see? Let's meet up later in the brown horse. Jimmy will be slower than them other birds. Five o'clock is good. We'll all see you there, said Boris. Buck started to laugh out of pure relief. I'll tell Buttercup when he gets through with the cops. He won't want to miss this. He galloped back into the cold house to tell the dog. Buttercup was still guarding Aloysius, growling at him. If the poor man had even blinked his eyes, Bob was calling the bureau for some backup. Inspector Janssen was having trouble with the lock on the bedroom door. When it finally yielded to the key, he stood in the open doorway for a minute to allow his eyes to become accustomed to the darkened room. There were piles of stolen objects heaped on the floor, on the bed, on every available surface. Expensive digital cameras, mountains of fine jewellery, a box covered with precious gems that was filled with credit cards. There were six small 19th century Dutch landscapes on the wall over the bed, countless mobile phones, silver and golden candlesticks, Chinese porcelain vases and small Persian carpets. Look at all this, said Rolf to himself. It looks like the plunder of a pirate ship. Our man smells like a skunk, but I got to admit he does have rather good taste. He walked across the bedroom and switched on the light. One wall was covered with a dusty red velour curtain. When he pulled the curtain back, he saw hundreds of small photos randomly fastened to the bare wall with sticky tape. There were pictures of people chewing with their mouths open, children falling off their bikes, spilling their food. It was just about every embarrassing situation you could possibly imagine, and all of them had been taken without anyone's permission. Crazy maniac, cried Rolf. What was he thinking? The skunk-like smell was very intense in this bedroom, probably because the door was always kept shut. Suddenly Inspector Rolf Janssen had the answer. It had been staring him in the face, or rather it was floating up his nose. He knew who it was. Even though Aloysius had been clever enough to cover his tracks in the past, and even though he refused to say anything now, he had always left that awful smell in a room. It hovered like a dense cloud over every crime scene. Ha! Rolf cried triumphantly. That's it. Who else could it be? Who else could ever smell so bad? He returned to the kitchen and said very quietly, Bob, it's over. Do you know who we got here? It's the skunk. We've nicked him, partner. Rolf started to laugh and found it hard to stop. Smell him, Bob. Smell him and then ask yourself who you've been chasing these many years. What a lucky break. They'd been hunting him for seven years, two weeks and three days. When more officers arrived in the kitchen, Buttercup let the police take Aloysius, who still refused to say a word. Buttercup barked three times, saluted the officers with his paw, and trotted off towards the cafe to wait for Buck Buck and the Ravens. The police bundled Aloysius into a waiting van and carted him off to the local station for further questioning. As they left the house, Aloysius looked up at his own roof. There he saw his partner in crime, Yander Rover, sitting in the gutter, trying to repair his broken tail feathers. Aloysius called out to him one last time, and his voice trembled. 
Yan, come here. Please, Yan, don't leave me. The evil parrot shrugged his shoulders and turned his back on Aloysius. The police raced away with the unhappy thief, their sirens screaming in the busy streets. Transportation trouble. When Boris arrived at the hideout under the bridge, it was nearly eight at night. He climbed through the broken window, exhausted. It wasn't dark yet. The last weak rays of sun shone on the canals. Even the building seemed to sparkle in the cool Dutch evening light. Genya and Anton had just finished counting the money. Jimmy was so tired after all the excitement that he was curled up on the torn newspapers taking a nap. Grandfather, you are all right, cried Anton. We worried about you. Jimmy half opened his eyes and waved. Hello, boys. You should have seen me. I talked to a policeman in English. Buttercup was wonderful. Buck Buck was a great help. Then the inspector arrested Aloysius, but I'm afraid Jan Derover got away. I don't think we have much to fear from him now. He can't fly far. Our excellent dog pulled out most of Jan's tail feathers. Da, said Anton. Jan is afraid to face anyone by himself. Now he'll really be alone, won't he? Well said, my boy. Buck Buck told me he never wanted to see him again. Grandfather, we have two hundred thousand euros exactly, Anton reported with his usual serious expression. He pointed to the neatly stacked piles of banknotes on the table. We tried to calculate how much it is in rubles. Grandfather was silent for a moment. You could almost see his brain working. Then he slapped his head with his wing and staggered backwards with shock. Anton, I think we have more than six million rubles. We can buy twenty duchess and food for all the animals for the rest of our lives. Oi, we very rich birds, cheered Genia. One thing still worries me a lot, Grandfather, continued Anton. Excuse me, Grandfather, how can we carry money to Moscow? Flying is hard enough without back. We got big problem. It's very simple, said Jimmy, stretching his front legs. He yawned. Granny will help us. She won't mind at all. She's very honest. My granny can put it in the bank. It'll be quite safe in there. Absolutely a pravda. I can ask my friend in Moscow. You remember my old friend, the engineer I was telling you about. He can open an account for all of us in Moscow. Then we can buy what we need. Grandfather, you trust engineer? Asked Genya. He good man, no crook, you think? I trust him with my life, said Boris, and with our future. We have been friends for almost 27 years now. I know he is a man of honor. And I have a gran of honor, said Jim. But how can we tell her what, she, what has to be done? She doesn't speak Animish. I know for sure that she doesn't speak a word of Russian. Boris stuck one wing in the air and said, Let me take care of that. This old bird has learned a very important lesson today. And do you know what surprises me most? He drew himself up to his full height and peered intently at them through his glasses. I'm not afraid to talk to human beings, in English or in Russian, if necessary. I have been able to do it since I left university, but I was always afraid to try. The gift was in me whole time, and I didn't realize it until now. We can use this gift of speech, and the money, of course, to make our animal shelter. He nodded his head gravely and studied the little band of brothers. We are all part of the dream now he whispered softly. Even Jim's granny, I hope. Of course, she is part of it. I know she will help us. 
Why are we waiting? cried Genya. We go to Granny now. Genya очень, очень hungry. We go now, da? Da! shouted everyone at the same time. Then they all burst out laughing. To Granny's house we go. Buck Buck and Buttercup sat in their cosy old cafe eating toasted cheese sandwiches as they always did around dinner time. Butters usually finished his in one bite and Buck Buck pulled all the cheese off of his toast and ate it slowly. He was sitting in his favourite spot on a table near the back window of the cafe. They had a good view of Jim's front door. There she is, Buttercup, said Buck Buck softly. They watched Granny go into her hallway with a shopping trolley. He could see her open the living room curtains, then a window to let in some fresh air. A few minutes later, she shook her yellow dust cloth out of the window. Yeah, that's Granny, all right, said Buck Buck to his friend, who thumped his hairy tail on the floor. They saw three ravens land at the small table on Granny's front balcony. Genya had the dirty blue striped pillowcase clamped in his claws. The birds sat crowded together. Boris and his grandsons were waiting for Jimmy. They were too early, but that didn't matter to Buck Buck. He couldn't wait to see what was going to happen next. <laughs> Что не забудешь сам.